It was just a conflict, you know, a conflict of cultures. They didn't understand one another. It's the Indian custom that the land provides everything that they had. Well, they seen Whitman put these little seeds in the ground and then pretty soon these foods start coming up, watermelons, peas, corn, potatoes. And one time, a couple of the young um, Indians at the mission site wanted to see what the watermelons tasted like. And Whitman did do things for protecting his property, just like putting um, the arsenic in the watermelons. And then also Whitman, he had cattle, he had sheep at the mission. What he did was he poisoned some meat to get the wolves and the coyotes to get that instead of the good stuff. And um, it just so happened that one time the Indians seen this meat hanging up. And so then here they got a hold of it and they got sick. The Whitmans were killed on November 29th, 1847. Their mission was only in existence for 11 years before all of this came to a head. In the 1840s, the missionary arrived. The Jesuit. He was foretold the coming of this man by a chief named Circling Raven in the late 1700s. He told the Indian people, the Stichumsh people, that there would be a man coming in a black robe carrying a cross stick and that he would bring us words that would give us two trails to the heavens. Our original way with our tupias, our old people, and this additional way. This man arrived on Rathdrum Prairie with some flathead Indian people one day, and he was taken to the big camps. And there he established himself because two reasons. Number one, Circle and Raven told of his coming. And number two, in order for him to stay, he promised guns to the Coeur d'Alene's. And we were battling then and protecting our area with the encroachers of the blood, the Pigan, and the Black Feet. The priests, when they first came into this area, was in about 1842 which is long before the establishment of our reservation. The people at that time wanted to wanted us to become farmers and be, uh, <laughs> I, I call us the, un, the Kalispell people or the Ponderay people as one of the uncivilized tribes because we never were meant to be farmers, I don't think, you know, and we were put in this place and the growing season was short and the winters very severe. The Kalispell Ponderay people adapted themselves pretty well to Catholicism and they followed. And I don't, I don't mean to be disrespectful to the Catholic Church, but when someone comes in and tells you that you're going to spend the rest of your time in hell, and if you don't do this and if you don't do that. And when they were doing that is when they wanted to move the St. Ignatius Mission, the very first St. Ignatius Mission. It was established here on the Kalispell. The church was moved to which is now St. Ignatius, Montana. And I know that at one point or another when they were wanting to move, they wanted all the Indian people to move with it. And to me, that sounds a little fishy. I think it was really hard for the Plateau people to learn uh, farming when the missionaries first came in, both down here at Stevensville and over at Lapway, because the Plateau people, only women could put their hands in the earth. Men couldn't put their hands in the earth and, and farm. We couldn't even dig roots because men had blood on their hands because we're hunters and warriors, takers of life. But the women are givers of life and they're pure. And so they can put their hands in the earth. And that's a concept that was really hard for Plateau people to come to grips with 
because it had been so ingrained for thousands of years that men don't do that. Uh, first white settlers that came out thought, oh, these guys are really lazy. They're really lazy. The women are out there digging those roots and bending over and working hard all the time, but they didn't realize the cultural implication of a man putting his hands in the, into the earth. Many of the Coeur d'Alene's, mostly in that southern group, became excellent farmers. They accepted this change immediately. They embraced the Jesuit and his words. And there were those who refused. And those who were refused were punished by the missionary. It was like the missionary did not want us to have two ways to the heavens. It was, this one is no good. This one is the only one. One of the oral histories about the first missionaries, one of the first stories that was told and translated here was about Noah and the flood and, and how it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And if you live in Nia Bay, it can do that in the winter, 40 days and 40 nights and, and then some. So I think hearing that story for a first one was, they didn't find it uh, out of the ordinary. <laughs>